Here we have another very interesting problem, something that some of us may have experienced before. Let's say we're in an airport and uh, some of the, the concourses are very long and we have these rolling belts over which you can go stand up and then the belt will just kind of carry along. But let's say that the passenger A is kind of late and wants to rush, so he's running and every time he steps on a belt, he's running at 5 meters per second when the belt is moving at 2 meters per second. The belt sections are 20 meters apart each of them are 100 meters long and at the very end another 60 meters to get to the boarding area. So um, there's a second passenger who's even later, 10 seconds later than passenger A and that passenger says I'm not going to bother with the belt, I'm just going to run straight to the, to the gate. Notice that if you add all these distances together that would add up to 400 meters so he's got a 400 meter dash in front of him and he wants to catch passenger A by the time they both reach the boarding gate. How fast should passenger B run in order to catch up to passenger A? All right, how do you do that? Well, I think what we should do is try to figure out how long it takes for passenger A to get to the boarding area such that we can then say that passenger B will have 10 seconds less and then we can figure out how fast passenger B has to run. All right, so how long does it take? Well, let's see here. When the passenger A is on the conveyor belt, the relative speed of A relative to the hallway will be 7 meters per second. So he'll be traveling 7 meters per second here, 7 meters per second there, and 7 meters per second there. And then when he's in between and at the very end here, he's only traveling at 5 meters per second because it doesn't have the advantage of the moving belt. So we can slip it into two pieces. We also have the equation distance equals velocity times time. So we can divide it up, so we can say time is equal to distance divided by velocity. And since we have two areas where it has two different velocities, we can say that time total is equal to time 1 plus time 2. And of course, this is for passenger A. And time 1 will be the time that it takes to cover the 300 meters on the conveyor belts. So, and time is distance over velocity, so this is equal to 300 meters of conveyor belt divided by a velocity of 5 plus 2 or 7 meters per second plus he has an additional 20, 40 or 100 meters to travel and he'll do that at the speed of 5 meters per second and that will give you the total time that passenger A will take to get to the boarding area. Alright, so we have 300 divided by 7 uh, that's 42.8 plus 100 divided by 5 equals so 62 and 62.9 let's call it 63 seconds 63 seconds is the total time passenger A has to make it to the boarding area alright that means passenger B time will be equal to 63 seconds minus 10 seconds which is six, uh, not 60 but 53 seconds so passenger B now only has 53 seconds to make it to the boarding area Wow, that means 400 meters in 53 seconds. Wow, that's peculiar because that's my best time in the 400 meters and that's quite fast. I couldn't do that today. All right, now we go back over here and we know that velocity cannot be written as distance divided by time. So in this case, he has to travel the entire 400 meters divided by the time of 53 seconds. And what velocity is that? So 400 divided by 53 equals 7.55 meters per second. If you can keep that up for 400 meters, it'll make it to the boarding area at the exact same moment as passenger A. Matter of fact, if I was passenger B, I'd probably run on those conveyor belts as well. All right, that's how you do relative velocities in various ways. Hopefully this will help you understand that concept.